For today's video, we're going to be doing some press on nails. I have been absolutely loving the process of it, the quickness of it, the look of it. It's just so, so clean. You can't go wrong with a good press on nails or if you want to call them gelix type of nails. So definitely recommend trying that out to practice your nail art. I know acrylic sometimes can be very time consuming. So if you guys are just strictly wanting to practice some nail art, definitely recommend that. And if you're a long nail lover like me, the Goo Trade nail tips from Amazon are my all-time favorite. They're freaking long. The shape is perfect. And they are so durable, super sturdy. Definitely recommend them. I will leave them linked down below if you guys are interested. Amazon is my freaking favorite. I love Amazon. So I always try to recommend products that I get from there and that I really, really love. So that being said, we're going to be doing some gingerbread inspired nails. We're going to be doing nudes, browns, 3D nail art, icing. And then we're going to top it off with some sprinkles and definitely giving like all the Christmas vibes that you can get from a cookie design. Before we get into the video, we are going to be announcing the giveaway winner for my last video. The winner to that giveaway is going to be sent a goodie box of nail products. I'm gonna put together a box of all of my favorite essential products along with just some cool nail art stuff, nail brushes, acrylics, just a bunch of goodies to get you started. Hopefully add to your collection if you already have one going. Lil Dark Angel 9014, congratulations and congrats on the baby. Babies are such a blessing, so I hope you are enjoying all the mom baby cuddles. Make sure you comment down below in the comment section to claim your price and I can pin that comment. And as always, make sure you message me within 24 hours to claim your prize. Do not fall for the scams. I will never ask you for any type of money in exchange for your giveaway prize. And I definitely will not be announcing winners in the comment section. I always announce them in my videos. So stay alert. Always, always, always. Without further ado, I hope you enjoy the video. Now let's get right into it. Getting right into today's video, we're gonna be doing some press on nails with my all time favorite tips. Always recommend them. They are from Amazon, so very, very easy to get, very affordable, and they're such good quality. So if you like extra long nails like I do, these are 3XL square tips. They are amazing, very, very sturdy. I put these on last time when I did my little spearmint design and I smacked my hand so hard and they did not budge. My natural nail actually lifted a little bit, but the nails were still there. They didn't lift, they didn't budge, they didn't break, they didn't crack. So definitely recommend them if you want really long press on type of nails. These are my favorite as always, I will leave them linked down below. So I pretty much went in and I sized all of the tips to my nails. I'm making sure that they fit good. I'm placing them in order so that I know which one to grab. And then I'm just squaring off the tip as well. My ring finger does curve in a little bit. So I made sure that I kind of filed the side where it needed to be filed, making sure that it fits nice and straight on my natural nail. Now, I think by now you guys kind of have an idea that if I don't have the products that I need, we're going to make it work. So we are going to be using my big LED light from Kara Sky. I'm putting a top of acrylic powder behind it, kind of angling it upward so that I can use these press-ons perfectly and apply them. Easy peasy. I am going to be applying these tips with a top coat. So if you guys are interested in my pop-off method, I will totally share that with you guys in a future video. Just let me know in the comment section if you guys are interested in that. But I'm just applying these not for longevity. I'm just applying them for the purpose of the video. They are on there sturdy enough so that I can do all my filing, all my nail art, 
all the work that I need to do to these tips, they are on there perfectly until I am ready to take them off. So for reference, it works really, really good, but I'm just using the Not Polish Matte Top Coat to apply these just because it was right here and I figured that would work fine. I'm going to be going in, adding a good amount to the back of it, placing it where I need it to be placed, and then placing that under the light. Now, I'm not even going to lie. I think matte top coats do heat spike quite a bit. So you're going to see me throughout the process kind of move my hand, put it back in, take it out, put it back in. That way, it didn't get super hot. I had it on the low setting, and it still was heat spiking. So for reference, if you're adding a lot of matte top coat like I am, more than likely you're gonna get heat spikes and oh my gosh I haven't felt that in so long it hurts so bad so definitely do not recommend that I'm gonna be going in now with my hand file and kind of making the cuticle area nice and flush I did file them before going in and applying them but I didn't do a very good job because I was hand filing it and it really is kind of hard to kind of gauge how much you need to file it that's why it is key to have your e-file and at this point, you would go in with your 5-in-1 bit and file that, making sure that it is nice and flush in that area. But like I said, I didn't have my e-file, so we're doing what we got to do. I went in and hand filed the sides as well, the tip, and now we're going in with my buffer from Kiara Sky, just buffing for the purpose of blending that hand filed portion that I did around that cuticle area. Don't necessarily need to file the rest of the nail, so I'm just gonna be focusing on that top area of that press on nail. Now I'm going in with the lint free wipe and alcohol. I have alcohol here at my house. I do not have swipe. I need to honestly just have a stash of products that I typically use here at my house. And I'm slowly doing that, but I still need to stock up on a few other ones. Now I'm going to be making my own concoction of nude colors for the purpose of a pretty good, decent nude gel polish. If you guys have a really good brand suggestion for gel polish, I have been venturing out and using a lot of gel polish products. Definitely comment down below your favorite brand for that and I will definitely try them out. I need to get on that and order some good ones. Now for reference, when mixing this color, I pretty much just got a bunch of nudes that I had here at my house with the undertones that I wanted and I mixed them all together. So we're using the gel polish from Macart in the color Bella, mixing that into my mix and then the frosting gel paint in the color Nude from Profiles Backstage. And along with that, I threw in some Glow Gel Polish also in the color Nude from Profiles Backstage. And I believe I also threw in there some BB Gel. But I think I ended up just leaving that McCart one because it has a nice pink undertone. Now I'm just taking one of those gel polish brushes and using that to apply. We got a nice like orangey pink nude color from the mix that I made up. And I'm pretty content with it. I feel like it's going to look good with the design that I am going for. So I'm going to be adding two layers of that on these press on nails. I'm gonna be placing that in the light. I'm cleaning off my little dish right here just with a paper towel. And then we're gonna be going in with my top coat. We're gonna be using Matte It From Not Polish, adding that as my base so that when I go in with my nail art, everything is on top. And I can add all those really pretty cute details without struggling to top coat afterwards. I'm 
Always remember to cure in the light in between layers at 60 seconds. And now we're gonna be going in with another color that we mixed up. An alternative to this is using a jelly polish in the color white from Profiles Backstage. I did not have that with me. So instead I just took the frosting gel paint from Profiles Backstage, added some clear gel polish, which would be gloss it from Not Polish. And I just mixed those two together until I got a milky type of white color. And we're gonna be doing splatters and drips on my nails, except for my middle finger and my ring finger. We're gonna be adding some 3D nail art to that. So pretty much just do splatter type of design wherever you feel like it. Drips on whatever nails you feel like doing drips on and kind of just mix it up a little bit. Whatever your imagination gives, go ahead and do that. Now for the nail art, we were inspired today to do some gingerbread type of cookies for this design. I feel like I did gingerbread nails last year, but I wanted to really do some with some fun designs. And my little brain figured I would do some Christmas, well, at least one Christmas tree. I wanted to do hearts as well. And then I was kind of just gonna eyeball it to see where I would add more if I needed to add more and infill it in any little areas as long as it didn't look like too crazy. So we're starting off with the Christmas tree. And just how I mentioned in one of my other videos to draw easily a Christmas tree, you pretty much just do three connecting triangles. And I'm starting off with the top one, which is gonna be our smallest in width. And then I'm gonna be adding another one. Now for my gingerbread type of color, I unfortunately cannot tell you guys the mixture that I used for that because it is one that I did last year, I believe. So if someone can look for that video and see the concoction that I made, definitely drop it down in the comment section and I will pin that. But I'm sure it just includes a lot of browns, orange, yellows, trying to get that like deep gingerbread type of color. Now for the second triangle, this time I'm gonna be connecting it to the top bottom portion and I'm gonna start making it a lot wider. So at this point I am grabbing a little bit more product because I know I'm gonna have to make it a little bit wider. Same type of process, I'm just kind of pressing it down but also using the tip of my brush to kind of clean up and straighten things out, push it in, tuck it in wherever I feel it is necessary. And that's pretty much their all is to 3D. Once you get the good consistency of that bead, I feel like you could do endless amounts of nail art with acrylic and I love doing acrylic nail art. Sometimes it seems a little bit easier for me to do versus drawing something on there. So definitely try it out. I'm going to be using pretty much like a wet-ish bead just because I know that I need a good amount of time to mold it out. If I knew what I was doing and I knew I just needed to infill a little bit of area, then I would definitely use a drier bead. But for the purpose of this type of design and knowing that you need to expand it and pull it places and have a good amount of time to fix your design, definitely use more of a wet bead. And then once you're ready to set it into place I always drench the excess out of my brush or I guess I should say I drain the excess monomer out of my brush and then I go back in and work it pretty much speeds up the process because you don't have a wet brush going onto a wet surface so if you use a dry brush onto a wet surface it kind of minimizes the amount of dry time if that makes sense now I really wanted to do a heart and I wanted to do a heart with negative space inside of it. So pretty much just the outline of it. And so I figured I would go ahead and connect the two nails together that way. I love the vibe of that and I adore hearts. So we are going to be doing just that. 
as you can see, I kind of just put it on the nail and I started pushing it into the direction that I wanted it to go. And the more time that I spend doing this, the more monomer I'm grabbing because I want it to make the time go by slower, at least the drying time. And it allows me to move it a little bit longer versus when you have your dry brush. And I'm just gonna be patting it into place, again, using the tip of my brush to kind of carve sculpt anything out and then I am going in with one final layer of that color to blend all the seams together and add that gingerbread type of texture to it I feel like gingerbread cookies have like a nice little grit type of texture to it if you know what I'm talking about that's pretty much what I'm trying to aim for and then connecting those two nails, I'm going to start sculpting out the other side as well. Same process, I'm pretty much getting a good amount of acrylic on there and then I just start carving it out and pushing it in the direction that I want it to go, forming that other half of the heart. Now, I couldn't decide what else I wanted to do as far as a cookie design, so I figured I would just add another little heart on the corner. That way it kind of just looks like I angled them downwards, but this is gonna be like a full heart, starting with one side, making it pretty much into like a teardrop, backwards teardrop at least, and then I'm gonna be connecting the other side as well to that. And then again, taking a final layer across all of the little cookies to give it that nice grit. Now once that's dry, I'm gonna be going in with my milky white mixture that I created and I'm gonna be using this as icing on all of our cookies. So I'm just infilling, leaving a tiny border around each of the cookies. And then we're gonna be curing this in the light for a full 60 seconds. I'm actually going to be going in with a second layer just to deepen up that white. I didn't like how textured it was because of the grittiness of my cookie. So I figured I would make it a little bit more opaque and also kind of minimize that texture underneath by doing so. And definitely like how it looked a lot better. I'm just focusing on the center of that icing part. I'm not fully bringing it all the way out towards the edges of it. And then again, curing that in the light for a full 60 seconds.
Now I'm gonna be going in with our little sprinkles. I decided to add some sprinkles. We're just gonna be going in with the basic red and green Christmas type of feel. You can definitely do nudes or pastels or neons to give it a different vibe, but I wanted to make sure that it was like Christmas themed. So we are going in with red and green sprinkles and you're essentially just doing like a really long line. Um, kind of making sure that you splatter them different places. And then we're gonna be going in with that green color as well. Both of these liners are from Profiles Backstage. Love, love, love the colors. The, they are perfect for the Christmas time for sure. They're like the perfect red and the perfect green color. We're gonna be adding that back into the light for another 60 seconds, making sure we don't mess anything up. Then we're going in with our green and doing the same thing. Now because our white icing already has top coat in it, I bypassed top coating that. And then I just wiped the tacky layer off of our sprinkles to give it a little bit more of a matte finish. But that pretty much concludes today's video. Let me know what you guys think down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned a ton. And I'll see you guys next time. Mm -hmm.